Matt Mitty. I've been running from my problem so long. So was shame of the situation doing it so low. I was feeling so numb. I was so far gone. The Lord stepped in and now my old season is done. I need to exhale. I just, I just, I just, I just need to. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Lit Podcast where we motivate, inspire, help you when you're feeling low, and also help you to know God. <clears throat> man, I uh, woke up this morning early, man. God had put this uh, word on my heart. And um, I noticed that, you know, in life, even me, myself, that, you know, we constantly are on the go. We constantly have, um, you know, busy schedules. We're constantly uh, doing something. You know, something, and you know, ain't nothing wrong with being busy at, you know, at times. But what becomes a problem is when that busy schedule takes over our lives to where, you know, we're so busy, we are being under Satan's yoke. And that is the message on today is, you know, you got to get to a point in your life where stop being so busy being under Satan's yoke. You know, um, and I'm going uh, to, you know, tell my story about being busy. I'll... I mean, I got a long story. I'm going to just keep it, you know, short because I, I mean, I could be on here talking for a long time about being busy, man. But throughout, you know, you know, life so far, you know, I've always been a person that's always been involved in something. You know, even when I was in elementary, I, you know, I started being involved with the band, you know, playing the trumpet, trombone, baritone. They go to middle school playing the, you know, the tuba. And so I was always constantly doing something with uh, with music. And then went from, you know, playing in the band to doing the engineering, you know, to becoming the um, gospel hip hop artist, you know, um, teaching, ministering, um, having business. So all of that stuff, you know, kept me busy. For so many years, and not to mention um, um, working a full-time job, going back to school, in the midst of school, going through a lot of stuff that kept me, I mean, kept me busy, and also to where I was, you know, able to obtain my um, bachelor's degree. So I've been pretty much busy all of my life, but the part that that kind of had me down is I never took time to really sit still. Like, I didn't actually take a real vacation until I was 30 years old. You know, I never, you know, flown on a plane. You know, I never did any of it. I never, in, I never enjoyed life because I was so busy, you know, doing stuff. You know, you know, a lot of times, you know, we heard, you know, keep yourself busy so you won't get into no trouble and stuff like that. But guess what? In the midst of you being so busy trying to keep yourself out of trouble, <laughs> you're keeping your you you're still getting into trouble. Yeah, you are still getting into trouble spiritually, physically, emotionally. Yes, you know, sometimes taking on too much will leave you tired and defenseless, especially in the spiritual room. That's why busy, you know, saying being under Satan's joke. When you are taking on too much, you're doing too much, you're going to mess around and be so tired and defenseless. So how can you defend against um, spiritual attacks when you are so busy? And when you're in, and when you're so busy, guess what? You're not really focused. You're not focused. You your your focus is on trying to get that task done for that day or you know, run around and, you know, help people. You know, I was the time that I would like literally give up my whole day, you know, just to serve. Ain't nothing wrong with serving. Ain't nothing wrong with serving. I mean, if you're in the capacity, if you're able to serve, serve. I'm not discouraging you from serving, but you have to take time out for yourself. Cause I mean, um, I was, I was served so much, you know, me and my brother would serve so much. We'll get up, um, Sunday morning, go set up, break down, then we'll go and serve somewhere else. 
You know, a lot of the times that me and my brother, we was famous for serving, 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 serving. We was always doing stuff. We was always around in different ministries. And um, it has served to the capacity to where, like, I'm going to just be honest. I got to a point where I, I got tired of serving. I got tired. I got tired. I said, you know what? I do not feel like serving anymore. I got burnt out. Even when it came to, uh, you know, engineering, I got burnt out. I It wasn't, you know, at first, you know, it was um, fun. It was, you know, it's like, yes, you know, I'm able to serve, you know, you know, I'm seeing people being pleased. You know, I'm seeing people being happy. And that brought joy to my heart. But it got to the point to where I was so burnt out that it caused me to not really want to serve anymore because I took on too much and I was tired in defenses. Yes, I'm around these ministries and stuff like that. You know, I can ask, you know, people to pray for me on the drop of a dime and they'll pray. But personally, I was going through it. I was still... I'm still serving. I'm still doing the gospel hip hop. I'm still engineering, but I'm battling, you know, um, with addictions, with addictions of, you know, porn and stuff like that. Lust. I'm still battling with that stuff because, yes, I'm around all these people. But when I go home, I'm still dealing with those different addictions. I'm still, you know, up all night. Can't get no sleep. Burly, you know, making it to work. Then got it. Then that's not that's not even you know talking about like going to work itself and trying to work that job. I was so busy on that job doing so much to where I end up injuring myself because you know I just I just had to be this top notch carrier. I had to be you know Mr. Superman. A lot of times in life, you know, when it comes to us. As you know, believers or even just people, we have a giving and a caring heart, and sometimes that can be taken advantage of. And we want to be, you know, Superman and, and Superwoman and be able to, you know, save the world and stuff like that. But we got to take time to, you know, out for ourselves and not take on too much. And most of the time, when that happens, we go down into this rabbit hole, you know, we lose our drive. You know, we forget about our responsibilities. You know, a lot of times that, you know, that happens in um, in marriage. Um, you know, for, for example, um, just say that I'm being super busy doing everything else, helping out everybody else, and then I'm neglecting my own family. That, that tends to happen, you know, in marriage, whether if it's the husband or the wife. You know, it gets so busy to where the responsibilities of trying to, you know, be the superhero, we neglect our family. I don't heard so many stories about, you know, pastors or preachers or ministers or even just businessmen, you know, that are going on so many trips and their family is missing them. And then it ends up, you know, getting bad to where, you know, the wife want to spend quality time or the husband want to spend quality time. And it ends up being bad and it ends up going you know that person end up going down this rabbit hole you know uh a lot of the times like if we do not be careful of you know trying to you know save the world we will mess around and be under satan's yoke and here's an example of that this is what it looks like when you're trying to take on everything at once and you think that you can handle it you saying, you know what, man? I just want to be there. I just want to do my deal, my due diligence, and all of that stuff. I just want to do this, and I just want to, you know. A lot of times, they say that we want to just serve the kingdom, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. But you gotta be able to understand your limits, cause if you don't, guess what's gonna happen? You gonna be locked down. You gonna be locked. You gonna be locked down. Not able to move. You're going to be locked down to the responsibilities. You're going to be locked down to, you know, all of those different thoughts. You're going to be tired and defenseless, and you're going to mess around and go down that rabbit hole. 
and um, with that rabbit hole, you know, forgetting your responsibilities. The thing is, I didn't understand sitting down until I was forced to sit down. I was forced to sit down. Had to, you know, deal with so much, you know, drama. So I had so much stress to where it messed my body up. And when it started to mess my body up, I started to become injured easily. You know, I thought that I was Superman. I thought that, man, I can endure all kinds of stuff. You know, you know when you think about Superman, his weakness was kryptonite. My kryptonite was trying to save everybody. Yeah, that was my kryptonite with trying to save everybody. And guess what? God is not meant for me to save everybody. God only puts people in my path, you know, for that, you know, that time. I'm not meant to save everybody. Everybody's not meant to save everybody. Because if so, why, why, why would we need other people to do it? If I'm sitting here being Superman trying to save everybody... I'm not giving them, uh, the next person another chance to save that person that's on the block. You know, for me in the in Lost in Transition Ministries, I'm here to save as many people as that the Lord puts in my path. You know, even if somebody just looking at this video and getting encouraged and stuff like that, that's that's the limitation that God that God has for me. It's the same limits for the next person. It's the same limits for the next person. We're not meant to take on everything. When you think about the the 12 disciples why wasn't it just one if it was meant for one person to save everybody and do like that jesus could have just went on and saved everybody just himself he could just did that but he needed a team everybody is not meant to, one person is not supposed to just be going around doing everything at once and you know when we had that mindset of trying to be that you know that superhero we're going down that rabbit hole Let's go to uh, scripture, Luke 10, 38 through 42. And this is a story of Mary and Martha. You know, if anybody uh, heard this story before, this is definitely going to be familiar, you know, to you. Uh, the word of God says, verse 38, uh, Luke 10. Now it happened as they went that, you know, he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she said, and she had a sister called Mary, also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Mm. See, Ma see, Mary was smart. Mary said, you know what? I see the Messiah here, right here, right now. He's here. I'm going to send him. I'm going to get this word. I don't care what's going on. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. That's how I was. I got to the point where I was like, Lord, I need your help. I'm tired. I'm literally tired. I'm tired, man. I just want to sleep. Man, I you know, I got a little envious of people be like, yo, I can sleep all day long. I must be nice because I feel like I got other stuff to do. I can't sleep that long. I, man, I, I just got to I gotta keep on going. <laughs> and I was forced to actually sleep that long. Um, verse 41, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, <laughs> which will not be taken away from her. She said, Mar Mary was like, you know what? I don't care how busy I am that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit at the feet of the Messiah. I done heard so much about this man. Hey, yo, I need to get this word. Martha is worried about, you know, um, is, is worried about serving and all this other stuff. Jesus is like, yo. You know, take this moment, take this this minute, take this hour to just listen to what the Father has to say. That's exactly what he wants us to do in our life. Take this moment. Man, it, it don't take long. You know, now that I understand, you know, being under Satan's yoke for so long about being so busy. 
It's just like, you know what? In the mornings, I mean, I got the Bible app. It, it automatically gives me a notification where it says, read your Bible. Read it. It doesn't take long, you know, five to ten minutes. You can sit there and pray. Um, even if you're on your way to work, talk to him. Talk to him. And once you start to do that, guess what? You will go from, you know, being chained to all of those responsibilities and everything else that you got going on in your life. Have you stressing? Have you just, you know, um, feel like you're losing your mind? Then you'll mess around and be able to get free from all of that other stuff. First, you got to surrender. You got to surrender your will and your way. Once you surrender your will and your way, <laughs> God will be able to give you direction. Once you surrender your will and your way, God will give you direction. You got to listen. When you're so busy doing stuff, it's hard for you to listen. With that being said, let's go to Proverbs 1 and 5. Proverbs 1 and 5. I hope this is helping somebody on the day that, you know, you know, when you're doing stuff, it's good, but you have to, you know, put a, you know, put a limitation on that. Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. Let me say that again. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a wise and a man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. A man will hear and increase learning. How can you hear when you are so busy? Because guess what? When you are busy being under Satan's yoke, you're going to have that other voice going down that rabbit hole. You know, just like I mentioned, you know, earlier about me getting tired. In the midst of that, I got angry. I got frustrated. You know, the, the enemy was all in my ear and said, yo, they don't care nothing about you. You see that you are doing all of these works. You're doing all of these good works. And guess what? You still struggle. You still struggling. They don't care about you. You dealing what you dealing with and where are they at right now? All in my ear. And caused me to be bitter. Caused me to be angry. Oh yeah, it came, it definitely came out in my latest project, Gloss in Transition Volume 2. Go ahead and uh get that. You know, it's on Spotify, it's on all streaming platforms, DLS music, check me out. But it came out in the music because I knew that was my way of expressing myself. And it came out. And as I'm like, you know, listen to, you know, a lot of my songs, I was like, wow. You know, a lot of people said that it was very, you know, um, you know, you were very transparent and it, you know, it helped me. But it was my therapy. But did it have to get to that point to where, you know, I have to use that to get it out? You know, why can I why can I just not save nothing? Because I was, you know, programmed to you know to serve. You know, I felt that, you know, if I served and, you know, did all of these good deeds that, you know, all of this good stuff was just happening to me, I some and I'm going I'm to be real with you. You know, a lot of times I was doing it for the wrong reason. I was doing it because I want, you know, I feel like I want to be blessed. So, you know, I want to do it, you know, just to be blessed and stuff like that. But it turned from, you know, I had the wrong motives at first to where I enjoyed serving to the point to where I got so burnt out to where I did not, you know, like serving. But because of the fact that, you know, that God had to sit me down to where I'm able to, um, you know, to to think, to uh, to focus, to concentrate, you know, to, you know, even right now, I've been meaning to put out, you know, different videos for the podcast and stuff like that and be able to minister because, you know, this is what this is what I like doing. I like, you know, be able to, you know, help, you know, give you know, show people whatever, whatever God gives, you know, gives me to minister to others. And I've been wanting to, you know, get back and do this. Well, he said, okay, I'm giving you the time to do it. So now this is your time. You got to take advantage of that. But in order for you to do that, you have to listen for direction. And how can you listen when you are being so busy? 
because you got those two different voices. You got Satan's voice. You got the Father's, God's voice. You got the Most High. You got those two voices coming at you. And when you busy, that enemy is in your ear like 24-7. And guess what? Audibly loud about it. And so once you surrender your will, once you listen for direction, the ultimate thing, you have to prioritize your life. Yes, the one you have to prioritize your life. I mean, like I said, get up in the morning, um, you know, pray. It don't it don't take long. You know, set the course of your day. Read the Bible. If you got most people have smartphones, you know, download the Bible app, let it play. You know, listen to, you know, some positive affirmation in the morning. You know, set the tone of your day. And um, also prioritize your life. Um, like, one thing that I learned from um, a real good friend of mine, and it just, it just came to me just now, that you do not have to do everything in one day. I was the epitome of doing everything in one day. When I say everything in one day, everything in one day. Because in my head, you know, tomorrow's not promised. Yes, we know that to be true. Anything can happen. So in my mind, I feel like if I don't get this done, you know, I might not get tomorrow to do it. But guess what? If God is <laughs> God's will, you know, spread out, you know, your activities throughout the day or even throughout the week spread it out it don't have to be done all at once because you will burn yourself out doing it and God is not going to be able to really speak to you when you're or when you are so busy being under Satan's joke you know sometimes we need a mental break you know sometimes we need to just say you know what I just want to go you know me I've really got into nature and stuff like that you know, I would just like to go to a park, you know, with nothing but trees, you know, it's nice outside, and just sit and just woo sigh for a second. You know, a lot of times we need a mental break. We need a mental break. We need a spiritual break. We need a time where we can just, you know, if your person like to go inside the woods or by the ocean, you know, a nice looking river, you know, whatever. Do yourself a service and take yourself a mental break. You have to take a mental break or you will lose your mind. <laughs> so, you know, you have to get to a point in your life where you stop being on a same joke, being so busy. So prioritize your life. You know, do what you got to do. If, if uh, you know, if some, if you have to turn down, you know, something, just so you can take a mental break, go on a mini vacation or something, do that. I mean, I'm learning, I'm definitely learning that, you know, the hard way. So definitely take yourself a mental break, prioritize your life, and stop being under Satan's yoke. This is uh, D. Silman, The Lit Podcast, and I'm out. I've been running from my friends.